Hi. So, over the last few months, I've been interested in the emergence of complex behavior from simple sets of instructions, and strange interactors in particular have grabbed my attention recently, as evident in the last few uploads of mine. They fill a bounded region with intricate detail, all determined by two equations. While they might look a bit intimidating at first, they are really easy to understand. We start with a point in space, given through an x and y coordinate, and say that the next point in space which we move to is dependent on those parameters. We have a constant term that is always applied, two first order terms which are linearly dependent on x and y, two second order terms quadratically dependent on x and y, and one second order term dependent on x times y. The a's and b's are values that indicate how strongly each of those terms contribute to the overall movement of our point. You could make these equations arbitrarily more complicated by introducing higher order terms, trigonometric functions and the like, but this is a general expression for the simplest equations, capable of producing chaotic behavior in the plane. That's all well and good, but the problem that we are presented with is what values to choose for the a and b parameters. See, if we just pick 12 values at random, throw them into the equation and letting them run, the chance of finding a system behaving in a chaotic fashion is only about 1.6%. What's the deal with the remaining 98.4%? Well, those can be put into one of three different categories. Firstly, and most intuitively, the points can converge onto a single point. An extreme example of this is given when all parameters are zero in which case all points will collapse onto the origin. But in general, these convergent functions will look more like this, a slow approach towards a fixed point. The second case is also easy. The function just explodes. It diverges towards infinity, as would be the case with, let's say, the simple equation where the next step equals two times the previous step. Lastly, the point can jump between any finite set of values, back and forth, never landing on any new values. Because we are lazy and looking through all those non-chaotic cases to find the occasional needle in a haystack is boring, we want to automate the process using computers. So we generate 12 random numbers for the parameters and see if the system created is chaotic. For that we need to implement ways by which the computer can differentiate between the chaotic and non-chaotic cases. So let's go through by category finding ways of elimination. To see if a system explodes we can just pick an arbitrary distance from the origin and if our point gets greater than set distance, the parameters chosen can be discarded. If the system converges to a single fixed point, we can calculate the distance between the new and last position of our point and if this distance approaches zero, the system can be disregarded as well. The last case of oscillating behavior is a bit more difficult to get rid of. The values never diverge nor do they converge. They stay relatively stable in their boring in-between state. What comes to the rescue here is an old dead Russian guy and his exponent. The Lyapunov exponent is a measurement for how quickly a system loses information about its initial state or conversely how hard the system's development is to predict. The basic idea is to start with two points very close together and see how the distance to one another changes during the evolution through the system. In the case of an oscillation, these points will get closer together, both approaching their shared set of fixed points, while in the case of a chaotic system, their distances to one another will increase at first and then plateau out, with the maximum distance being the length of the bounded region of the strange interactor itself. The actual Lyapunov exponent is given by dividing the new distance between points by the old distance and taking the logarithm of that, resulting in positive values for increasing distances, meaning chaotic systems, and negative values for decreasing distances, meaning non-chaotic distances. Lastly, we want to look at the mean of that over many evolution steps of the system to eliminate one of results giving misleading information about the system. With that we are finished. Coding this up in Julia, banging our head against the wall in the process took me some time, more finding the bounded regions of the system as well as having the resulting pictures actually look somewhat nice, not the mathematics themselves. But finally, we are presented with some pretty looking pictures of randomly generated strange attractors. They can now be colored using whatever metric. In this case, just slapping on some false color, or in this case, having the distance between subsequent points be the color indicator. To now get some nice animations, we can simply change one of the parameters defining the equations over time.
And I find it quite fascinating how sometimes the system stays almost the same over large changes of one parameter and then quickly changes dramatically over only a very small interval. This reminds me a bit of those bifurcation diagrams and I wonder if there's any relation in terms of long patches of stable behavior and then sudden shifts of the entire system. But at this point I'm honestly just spitballing. So let's wrap this video up and I'll leave you to it with some animations. I want to quickly shout out Paul Brook, whose blog I originally stumbled upon, introducing me to random polynomial attractors, as well as Julian Clinton's Sprott, whose paper on the topic this video is in large parts based on.